Hey, what's up guys? My name is Echerno. Welcome back to another C++ video. It's been ages since the last one. I'm gonna get back into it now though. Dynamic casting, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. If you guys don't know what casting is in general in C++, I've got a video about that, so definitely check that out and familiarize yourself with that before you move on to this video. Um, if you're not familiar with the type system in general, I have a few videos about that as well because casting is to do with types. Casting is a way for us to convert between the types that we use in C++. So you need to make sure that you kind of understand how the type system works. Um, and more so maybe the point that the type system isn't something that is particularly enforced in C++. It's something that C++ kind of gives us as a way to protect our code but it's not something that we have to necessarily stick to or use because we can freely cast between types of any types, like if we so choose. But dynamic casting is provided to us as some somewhat of like a, a safety net really for when we want to do a specific type of casting. Now I've gone through kind of C++ style casts. There's two kind of ways to cast. There's the C style cast, which is just when you write your new type in brackets before a variable. But then there's also the C++ style cast, like static cast, const cast. I'll make probably more videos about that. But dynamic cast is a C++ style cast that only works in C++, doesn't work in C. Um, and it does some extra work to make sure that well, like the way that we actually cast, right? It's some, it's a, it's actually a valid cast. We don't just cast between two types and eh, whatever happens, happens. It's not like that. It actually does some validation for us to ensure that that cast is valid. Now, um, whether or not you use dynamic cast is again, totally up to you. I want to give you some points to, to kind of, um, I guess, educate you to a sense of whether or not you should, um, be using that if that's something that you want to do, but more so dynamic cast is, uh, is quite a, it, it's, a, it's a tool that's more like a function. It's important to realize that it's not just like a cast that is done at like compile time. It's evaluated at runtime. And because of that, it does have an associated runtime cost. I might even make a video in the future comparing the performance of just normal kind of static cast versus a, a dynamic cast. Because of course, since the dynamic cast does extra work, um, it does kind of come with a small performance cost and that's normal. But what dynamic cast does is specifically it's used for casts along the inheritance hierarchy. Now, if you don't know what inheritance is in C++ or what classes are in C++, check out my video on inheritance and on classes and all that stuff because that will help you out. Um, but essentially what that means is if I have a class that is a subclass of another class and I want to either cast to the base type or from the base type to a derived type, that's where I can actually use a dynamic cast, right? So let's just say we have an entity we have an entity class, which is like the class for kind of all of our entities in our game. And then we have like a player class and maybe like an enemy class and they're both entities. So they're derived from the entity class, right? If I just want to cast a player object back to an entity object, that that's easy. I mean, a player already has the type entity. So that, that can be done implicitly. No casting is necessary. Although if we wanted to, we could still use dynamic cast to do it. Now, the other way around is where things get a little bit more complicated. So by the other way around, I mean, if we have an entity instance and we want to cast it to a player, we have no way of knowing whether or not it's a player, right? It's as far as we know, it is an entity pointer, right? It's an entity instance. It's an instance of an entity object, right? So what is an entity object? Well, it could be of type entity, could just be an entity, could be neither player or enemy, right? could just be an entity, but it also could be a player or it could be an enemy. That's totally valid. We might've made it a player. We might've made it an enemy or it could be an entity. It could be one of three types. If we want to say that actually I'm going to cast this to player, we don't know if it is a player or not. The compiler has to either believe us. And if we're wrong, let's just say it was an enemy and we try and access data that is unique to player or a function that modifies data that's unique to player our program will probably crash and that'll be like a disaster. Um, so because of that, dynamic cast is actually used to validate that. So what happens is if we have an, uh, an entity instance that is actually an enemy, right? But we cast it, we try and cast it to a player using dynamic cast, that cast will fail and that dynamic cast will return a null pointer. We'll just return zero. And then we can validate that or do whatever we want. So basically we could use it to check to see if an object is a given type. So in other words, I can try and do a dynamic cast on that entity object to convert it to player and then check to see if that returns null. If it returns null, then it's not a player. 
right? This is a lot, a lot of the stuff is more easily explained in code. So let's just dive in and take a look at a basic kind of setup in which this might be useful um, and how we could actually use dynamic casting. Okay, so I've got just a blank C++ project here because um, I really wanted to kind of show you guys everything. So if we do what I just described, if we have like an entity, right? If we have a player, which is an entity, so public entity, and then we'll also have um, that enemy class that I talked about, which is also going to be an entity, right? Now, in terms of the data that these will have, um, it, it's not even required for us to actually add any data. Um, so I probably won't just to keep this brief, I think, um, because it's not really worth going into that stuff. But basically the idea is we have three different types. They, they're probably filled with functions, filled with data that is unique to their specific types. How do I make an entity? Well, let's just say I wanna make a player. I can just type in player, player equals new player. Now for this video, we're just gonna be using raw pointers. I might make a video in the future about dynamic casting with smart pointers, but this video just gonna cover kind of the original dynamic cast that is used with raw pointers. So we have a player, right? Now the thing is this player already has two types. It has both entity and player associated with it. It's actually even got like a typeless thing as well, which we might talk about later. But it's got the, those two types, entity and player. So what I could do is easily just change this to entity, right? Or I can make an entity E equal, equal player, right? Implicit cast. However, once I've done that, if I wanna go back to player, I can't easily do that. So I, I can type in player P equals E, right? That's gonna give me an error. Why? Because, well, I have to cast it, they're different types. The reason is that this could have easily been an enemy. You know, what if I do entity E1 or whatever equals new enemy, right? What happens here? What if, what happens if I do E1, right? We don't, it's still an entity, but is it a player? Is it an enemy? We don't really know at this, at this point. So because of that system, we have to actually reassure the compiler by saying that, hey, it is a player. Now, in this case though, this is dangerous because E1 is actually an enemy. And so if we cast it to a player, this will initially work. And in fact, if enemy has a function that like player also has or entity also has, and we try and run that function, it'll probably work. We probably won't even notice any issues with it. But if we try and do something that is unique to player that enemy doesn't have, such as access certain data members that only player has and not enemy, since the underlying type is actually enemy, our program will likely crash or do some really weird things that we really don't want it to do. So because of that, um, we can, uh, again, instead of using raw casts or even like a static cast, because you can still use, you know, a static cast with this, like that, I mean, that's fine. Instead of that, what we can do is swap this out for a dynamic cast, right? Now, if we try to do that at this rate, it's gonna tell us that it needs to have a polymorphic class type because dynamic cast only works with polymorphic class types. How do we do that? Well, we basically need to have some kind of virtual function table that actually um, tells us that it is, in fact, a polymorphic class type. So we can make this, we can just say virtual void, you know, print name or something like this, doesn't really matter. But the point is that will make this class have a V table and thus there's stuff to override, which means that is it's a polymorphic type and we can use dynamic casting with it. Again, if this was a real entity class, it would definitely have virtual functions. So this is just making it a little bit more realistic as well. So we can cast it, right? So we've got our E, which is a player, or we can use E1 which is at an actually actually an enemy. So we could say actually player, just to make this a little bit more clear. And then we could say, say actually enemy, right? So if we try and get our, our enemy into a player, this should fail, right? But if we try and convert this player to a player, that should work, even though they're both at the, at the moment, they're both entities, okay? So let's take a look at what this code will do if we were to execute it. I'll put a breakpoint here and hit F5. And of course, I need to make sure that I name these variables different things. Okay, so this cast should fail, right? Because this is actually an enemy and we're trying to cast it to a player. So F10, and you can see this returns null, the cast didn't work. However, if I try and do it here, you can see that P1 is in fact a valid entity. It successfully was able to cast it into a player because it actually was a player. And that is essentially all the dynamic cast does. If the cast is valid, then it returns the value that you want, the player pointer. But if it is not valid because it's not the given type that you've kind of claimed that it is, then it will just give you null. That's what dynamic cast does in a nutshell. Now, the question that you should have from this is, but how does it know? 
I haven't written anything and it's not like C++ is some managed language like C Sharp or Java or anything like that. How, how does it know that player is actually a player? Like, how does it know that this entity that I have is actually a player and not an enemy? What the way that it does that is it actually stores runtime type information. That's literally what it's called. RTTI runtime type information. It stores runtime type information about all of our types. This does add an overhead, but it lets you do things like dynamic casting. So there's two things to consider here. First of all, RTTI adds overhead because suddenly types, type, types need to store more information about themselves than were otherwise present. And B or two, um, Dynamic cast is also also takes time because we need to actually check to see does the type information match? Is this entity actually an enemy or is it a player? What type is it? We have to do that validation at runtime anytime we dynamic cast. So because of that, it does add that overhead. Now, what we can actually do in our code here is turn runtime type information off if we don't need it. So if we go to our properties and it's different for every compiler, but over here inside um, C, C++ and language in Visual Studio, you can see we have this enable runtime type information. If we were to switch that off and then we attempted to compile our code, um, you would see that it actually would give us a warning which says dynamic cast used on polymorphic type entity with uh, this just means that we've switched off runtime type information. So with that, with RTTI off, gives us unpredictable behavior. And if we try and run this code and we hit F10 to get past this invalid dynamic cast, you can see we actually get an access violation. So that actually throws an error for us. All right, so it doesn't, it doesn't give us null because it can't because it doesn't have that type information. So make sure that you're aware of the kind of implications that dynamic casts actually do because um, they do kind of do extra things and they do require that RTTI is on in most cases um, if we were to like, for example, do a cast from player to entity, which is implicit anyway, it would be fine. It wouldn't crash. But if we try and do something like this, you can see it just, just it just crashes. It doesn't even allow us to do it at all. Um, and having RTTI on is pretty typical, but also does add a bit of an overhead. So just keep that in mind. One last thing that I want to wanted to show you is that because of dynamic, because we have dynamic casts, you know, we can do that validation that I mentioned. We can do something like if P0. Now, this is very similar to managed languages like C Sharp or Java, where we can basically try and check what, what something actually is. So this actually enemy, you know, in like C Sharp, we could do if, 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 if actually enemy is um, a player, then we can do blah, blah, blah. Uh, in Java, we have instance of. So by using this kind of dynamic cast thing, we can basically achieve the same thing. We can say, if dynamic cast player actually enemy, right? If actually enemy is a player instance, then we can do the following code. And if I just complete this, you'll see that that's perfectly valid, right? Um, but obviously we'd want to kind of cast it again and use it probably in that case. So uh, therefore we'd probably do something like this. This kind of code is pretty typical. You see it all the time, um, but just be aware that dynamic casting does incur a cost. So if you're all about optimization, if you're trying to write really fast code, you'll probably want to avoid that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. You can hit the like button. You can also help support everything that I do on patreon.com forward slash the and I will see you next time. Goodbye.